welcome back to TCS Start Frogs. My name is Travis and I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm going to kickstart a new series where I go over the care of different species of dart frogs. This will be the first part to this series and today I'm going to talk about the dying dart frog or Dendrobates tinctorius, also known as tinks in the hobby. So to start off I'd like to talk about housing. Um, I always recommend at least 10 gallons of space for one frog. You can also keep a pair in 10 gallons, but if you're planning on getting more than two frogs, you definitely want a larger tank, especially since Tinctorius can be aggressive towards each other. And I do recommend keeping Tinctorius in a male, female, sexed pair. That's the way they seem to do the best. And there are people who've had success with groups um, in larger tanks. Uh, you just have to make sure you feed the frogs enough and make sure that they have plenty of space to get away from each other if they do start fighting. And of course, if you notice one that's getting bullied, um, if it's getting skinny, not getting enough food, or just getting stressed out, you definitely want to remove that extra frog from the tank and uh, kind of, you know, give it its own tank or just separate it and let it get some weight back on it before you would add it back into the group if you decide to add it back in ever. Um, so as far as tank setup goes, I house a lot of my pairs of Tinctorius in a standard 10 gallon tank. Uh, I do have a couple in the European style tanks and my setup is pretty basic. Um, I've got a drainage layer either with the clay balls or with um, some hydro stones just like for, for hydroponics for a drainage layer. and on top of that, I've got just a, a basic layer of uh, vivarium substrate and then some leaf litter and some different types of tropical plants. There's a ton of different types of plants you can use. I also like to put in some sort of a water bowl. That way they've always got a water source um, just in case the tank were to get dry for some reason. And a couple of hides, maybe some cork bark, um, a ceramic pot that's been cracked in half, something like that. Um, those are all pretty easy ways to make a pretty simple tank. And as far as humidity goes, I've got pretty much solid 100% glass lids on most of my tanks. Uh, some of them are drilled and have some stainless steel mesh to give more ventilation. And I'm leaning towards more and more ventilation the more I work with dart frogs. Um, although they do like, you know, their high humidity, it's pretty important to give them a good amount of ventilation so that they don't get bacterial or fungal infections. So I recommend usually, depending on where you are in the country or in the world, um, humidity varies everywhere. So I usually recommend somewhere around uh, 80 to 90% of the top of the tank be covered and 10 to 20% um, be ventilated so that they can get some good airflow. And as far as feeding Tinctorius, um, they're not too picky. They do like smaller food. So, you know, things like crickets are kind of out unless you're going to get really small pinhead crickets. Um, I mean, I've even tried to feed my adult tanks, you know, small crickets and they'll try to eat them, but they usually end up spitting them out. Uh, much better staple food is something like fruit flies. So, you know, fruit flies, bean beetles, springtails, that's going to make up the majority of their diet. Um, you can also feed them things like isopods. Uh, those are all really great foods for them. Um, as far as temperature also, Tinctorius do really well right around room temperature. I believe anywhere between 65 and 78 degrees is ideal for them. They can go a little bit below that and a little bit above, but I wouldn't keep them at those temperatures for too long. Um, I try to aim right for around 75 degrees for all my frogs, but tinks do seem to be a little bit more sturdy as far as being able to handle um, a little bit higher temperatures than some of the species that I work with. And as far as on the low end of temps, um, I know in the winter sometimes my house gets down into the low 60s, and they seem to do fine at those temperatures, just for nighttime drops anyway. Um, you gotta remember that during the daytime, your lights on your tank are also gonna bring the temp back up. So that's um, something to remember when you think about the room temperature versus the actual temperature in the tank they're in. Um, 
As far as sexting tinks, if you're looking to breed them, because they are a pretty easy frog to breed, uh, males will call when they are mature. Uh, they make just a very low buzzing noise. You usually can't really hear it, um, even through glass it's usually kind of muffled. You usually just see their throat kind of puff out and then you can tell by that that they're calling and um, you know then you know that you've got a male. Males are the only ones that call, females don't make any noise. And the other way you can tell is on the front hands or front legs of the frog, the toes on the males are going to be larger and they'll have a heart shape to them, whereas females are going to have smaller toe pads and they're going to be more square at the end of the toe on the toe pad. So that's kind of how you tell male from female. I think that uh, one of the reasons that Tinctorius are such a great frog is they're big, they're really bold, I mean they come right out to the front of the tank as soon as you feed them, and so for me, they're just one of my favorite frogs because they're always out in the open. You can always see them. Um, it's easy to know that your frog's doing all right, which makes them, you know, the fact that they're out makes them a really good beginner frog. And the other thing that makes them really cool is all the different uh, morphs and locales of Tinctorius. Uh, basically, they come in a wide variety of colors. So you have quite a few different uh, colors and patterns to choose from if you're going to get tinks as one of your first star frogs. So um, I've been keeping them for a long time. Uh, my oldest male Tinctorius that I've got, the oldest frog in my collection, is now 17 years old and uh, I hope to have a lot more frogs that are you know that age once they get there. I mean if you take good care of them they live a long time so uh, take that into account also if you're thinking about getting into dart frogs because a lot of people think you know it's a frog it might only live a year or two um, if you take good care of them they can live you know 15 to 20 years so um, it's important to take that into account when you're you know taking an animal into your house and having responsibility over it so I think that's all I've got to say about tanks and Thanks everyone for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, just drop me a line down in the comments down below. And if you want to check me out on social media, I'll leave all my links down in the description. And also if you want to check out my website, I'll leave a link down there as well. And that's about it. So thanks for watching. You guys have a great day.